so um well i'm Bessarian from twitter and a, a while ago i wrote a, a thread talking about uh palamas and catholic theologians because um i was talking to an orthodox on twitter and then he claimed that no catholic theologian or respectable clergy had ever claimed palamism is heretical or leads to polytheism which is which is ridiculous so i wrote an, an entire thread listing a lot of theologians that i could remember um scholastics and and from every school of thought that um condemned palamism um and my this this thread that i wrote was not a thread about an opinion that i have i was not defending a point of view i was i was defending a like i was just explaining a fact that that orthodox didn't get that um palamism um has always been condemned as a heretical view of god by every catholic theologian that commented um that talked about palamas or, or his his view about the beatific vision or the essence energy distinction every every catholic theologian that talked about this condemned it as heretical um among the scholastics right um so i i compiled a lot of a lot of theologians that talked about this and and posted this thread on twitter right and then a friend of mine sent this thread to father caps and F father caps he tried to respond to my thread i i honestly don't see why he would be responding to my thread because my thread is not i'm, I'm not exposing an opinion i have I'm, I'm not talking i'm not defending a point of view i'm just explaining the undeniable fact that palamism has been condemned as heretical by every catholic every scholastic catholic theologian uh and then when Father Caps responded to me, I, I was I was surprised by how many mistakes he made in his response. Like he he demonstrated very clearly that he has no idea about Scotism or, or the Franciscan view about the essence of God or, or the beatific vision, right? Uh, I could quote a lot of examples, a lot, a lot of mistakes, a lot of very, very basic mistakes that he made. Um, in his letters like for example he said that a real distinction according to the franciscan tradition uh but not for the dominican um the, the real distinction requires does not admit separability right so according to caps uh for the franciscans a real distinction does not admit separability but for the dominican it does and then he concludes that this implies that the expression real distinction are equivocal terms for both scholastic traditions this is this is completely absurd this is a fallacy and, and the premise that um for the franciscans the real distinction does not admit separability but the, for the dominicans it does it, it's false um and this is this is a very basic mistake this is a, a mistake that in anyone that has read a franciscan talking about this or a dominican talking about this would know this is false Right, because for example, for the Dominicans, there is no defined position on, on this topic, right? Uh, Domingo Bañez, in his commentary on Prima Pars, in his Scholastica commentary, he uh, he explains how the Dominicans are divided about this, how the Thomists are divided about this. Two examples of two opposing views would be um, Soto, who in his commentary on the sentences he defends that a real distinction does imply a separability, but Cajetan um, does not defend that. He's, he claims that a real distinction uh, does not necessarily mean that um, two things are separable, right? If, if two things are really distinct, this is not, it doesn't mean that these two things are separable. And later, fo later followers of Cajetan, like Didico's Massey, would they develop this concept a lot. Um, for example, he distinguishes two kinds of real distinctions metaphysical real distinctions and physical real distinctions uh and physical real distinctions do require separability but metaphysical real distinctions don't um right so like there is no defined position among dominicans and thomists for this topic uh and caps is wrong to say that there is a dominican position about this 
And he's claimed that according to the Franciscan tradition, a real distinction does not admit separability. It's completely false. If you read any Franciscan, um, any like any manual written by a Franciscan talking about the essence, uh, essence and existence the distinction, they will argue against the essence and existence real distinction by saying that they are not separable, right? Um, John Betta, in his commentary on Aristotle's metaphysics, he, he uses the argument against Cajetan. And any basically every other Franciscan follows follows Trombetta on this. They they believe that a real distinction does require separability, and since essence and existence are not separable, um, they are not really distinct. So, like this kind, in Father Caps, he he makes like those mistakes very frequently. There there are lots and lots of those kind of mistakes that. Uh, make like it seems that he doesn't he has no clue at all what he's talking about um, and for another example would be like he said that I am claiming that Scotists are heretics because they are like Joubert de la Pere and Palamites are heretics because they are like Joaquin de Fury this is completely false um, you can take uh, the Franciscans the, and the Scotists that I list on my thread, and they argue against the Palamites by citing, uh, by citing the condemnation to Joaquin de Fiore and uh, Gilbert de la Pere, like Juan de Consuegra, who was a, a Franciscan and a Scotist, he condemns the Palamites using that condemnation, and Josefa Turing, who was also a, a Franciscan and a Scotist, and he cites precisely the condemnations of uh, Gilbert de la Pere and, and Joaquin de Fiore to condemn them uh, and, and say that Palamites, pa the Palamite the uh, theology is, con is to be considered heretical according to Catholic theology, right? So now going on to, to Cap's view on, on beatific vision, I haven't watched the video uh, in its entirety uh, that uh, Wagner is commenting on, but I, I read an article um, my father Caps and, and one a, a very important point that Caps makes during the article is that according to Bene, uh, in, in Benedict XII's definition of beatific vision, there is no definition, no precise definition of what intuitive vision of God uh, means, right? And therefore, um, you can kind of twist the words and, and then come to the conclusion that the Palamite view can be acceptable as long as you interpret that intuitive vision as meaning through the through the energies. Um, but this is completely false because Benedict the Twelve defines uh, in that document in Benedictus Deus what um, what intuitive vision of God's essence means. Um, I'll take for example. I will, I will cite here a Scotist, a Franciscan called uh, Josefo Arcangelo, who wrote a, a course of theology. Uh, and he comments on this and he defines the, the terms in a, in a very precise way. And Benedict XII uh, follows, follows him precisely. Um, so Josefo says the following quote, there are two kinds of vision, one corporeal, one intellectual. Um, and the first definition is, Corporeal vision is the action of the bodily eye, which apprehends an external body. The second definition is intellectual vision is the action of the mind, which is spiritual, perceives what is abstract. And here the theologians distinguish abstractive vision and intuitive vision. The third definition is abstractive vision, um, which is that by which one object is known to someone through another object as a medium. Um, it is this kind of uh, vision that the apostle has in mind in Romans 120 when he says through creation God's invisible qualities his eternal power and divine nature are clearly seen um, and the fourth definition is intuitive vision which is that by which the object is immediately known in itself as it is face to face 
right? So this is what uh, Yosefo, who's his code is in a Franciscan, um, this is how he defines intuitive vision and abstractive vision. Um, this is this is very very clear for anyone familiar with uh, scholastic psychology that these terms are they are very clearly defined. Intuitive vision is when an object is immediately known in itself, and abstractive vision is when an object is known to someone through another object as a medium. Yeah, um, yeah. One's going to be demensive, uh, uh, sort not demensive, um, discursive reasoning. Um, sort of abstracting from premise to conclusion, because th this this word intuitive, um, although uh, the, the same exact terminology isn't used in, by Saint Thomas, uh, intu intuitiva, intuiti, yes, exactly Latin word, but isn't used by Saint Thomas. But similar uh, language and concepts are used when he talks about uh, the mode of angelic intellection, because it's going to be something which is without discursive reasoning. Right, so uh, here I quoted the precise words of a Scotus, a Franciscan, right? But this definitions, they are they coincide with any definition given by a Dominican or a Jesuit. Oh, and by the way, Josefo, um, right after that, when he is listing the errors regarding the beatific vision, he says that among the, the heretics are the anthropomorphists, the some Gentiles, Palamites, and the Armenians. So, so, so what do you what do you think about what do you think about the idea that the Franciscan um, that that there is some sort of Franciscan school uh, that is separate from the Thomas when it comes to the object of the Beatific vision that we can uh, kind of fit Palamas into or Palamas. Well, it's it's completely ridiculous to try to fit Palamas among. Um, among the Franciscans. It, it makes no sense at all. Every single Franciscan that ever commented on Palamas was to condemn his views. It's completely absurd to say that uh, the Franciscan view can be somehow, that, that, that Palamas can be reconciled with the Franciscans. Like Josefo Turing, a Franciscan, mentioned Palamas in his Dissertatius Quota Theologica Dogmatica Scholastica, and, and he claims Palamas was a heretic when the Consuegra, another Franciscan, a Scotist, in his cursus, he says that the Palamites monks made an insurrection against the eternity of God. Uh, Yosefo, that I just quoted, says that uh, Palamas, the Palamites are a, one of the group of heretics that deny the Catholic doctrine of the intuitive vision of the essence of God. So it's completely ridiculous to try to fit in Palamas among them. Oh, yeah, you, you uh, have one that you sent and, in, the, in the Discord, uh, Thuring. Palamas' yeah. sentence of a real distinction among God's essence and his operations is a foolish and impious error. Yes. Uh, yeah, so those definitions that I gave from Yosefo, they are precisely the same definitions given by any other theologian. You can pick, for example, um, a Jesuit, um, Joseph Monchai. Um, he also defines, he, he when he's commenting on beatific vision, he defines the terms in the exact same way. And if you go to Benedict XII's um, Benedictus Deus and you read what he says about intuitive vision, he defines it precisely like those scholastics. He says, uh, quote, these souls have seen and see the divine essence with an intuitive vision and even face to face without the mediation of any creature by way of object of vision. Rather, the divine essence immediately manifests itself to them, plainly, clearly, openly. Yeah, so, and he keeps going. So it's precisely the same definition. There's, there's no doubt about it. And, and every single Catholic theologian, every scholastic that commented on, on this, on this, uh, on this question, on, on the Palamite view of the beatific vision was to condemn Palamas, right? I can cite Gotti, um, who I also cited on, on my thread on Twitter, who was a Dominican, a Thomist. He was highly respected. He almost became Pope. Um, he's one of the greatest Thomists of all time. And he lists among the error, uh, the error of the, of the Greeks, who was um, created by Gregory Palamas. Uh, and then he, he explains the error of Palamas and contrasts it with the Catholic belief 
that the created intellect can see the lumen gloria and um, in fact sees the essence of God in itself. Um, also, of course, Batavius, um, a, very, a classic example of a Catholic theologian who um, explains the Palamite theology um, in depth and condemns Palamas as a heretic. And he even says that, um, he says the following quote, um, among those who openly defended the, that the divine nature cannot be seen as it is in itself, even by the blessed souls, we have those old thinkers um, who asserted either obscurely or more clearly, as I showed above. And we have of more recent memory, the Greeks and the Armenians. Uh, concerning both, Richard Rolf, Archbishop of Armagh, is a witness in book 14 of the Armenian question chapter, first chapter. Among the Greeks, Gregory Palamas was the most vigorous defender, defender of, this fact, of this faction in his um, novelty and was their Corypheus, um, whose history in ridiculous dogmatic theology, I describe it in the first book of this work, right? So, uh, and Petavius later, he, later on, he contrasts the Palamite view with the Catholic theology of an intuitive vision of the essence of God against the Palamite um, notion of the beatific vision. Um, and also Perone, very, very interestingly, Perone, who is a very known theologian uh, in his De Deo Creatore, he says the following, quote, the blessed in the supernatural heaven see the essence of God intuitively. And then he keeps going. This article of faith was defined by the Council of Florence in Acts 22. And the same was also defined by Benedict XII. I put this thesis forward against the Palamites who claim that the blessed uh, do not see God as he is in, him, in, in himself, nor in his essence, nor supernaturally, but abstractively, right? So here is a, a Catholic theologian citing Benedict XII and the Council of Florence against the Palamites. And every theologian that comments on this uh, does the same. Bilwar in his Summa Summae, he, he says the following, I say, that the created intellect can, intellect can see God supernaturally as he is in himself. This is against the Palamites and the Armenians, and against them, it was defined in the Council of Florence in the decree of union given to the Armenians that the souls which are purged in heaven intuitively, uh, which are purged, see um, God intuitively as he is in, in himself in heaven, three in one as he is. The same is defined by Benedict XII, right? So every Catholic theologian who interpreted this document by Benedict XII interpreted um, as a condemnation of the view of the Armenians and the, Pal and the Palamites that uh, we did not see intuitively the essence of God in heaven, right? So there is uh, absolutely no doubt about this interpretation. Um, you can take any book on the theological loci, like um, Melchor Canos, uh, book or Perone's book, they will all always say that uh, the consensus among the schoolmen it, um, provides a theologically certain argument. Yes. Um, so this is this is there. There's no doubt about this interpretation of Benedict XII's uh, document. It is it is a defined thing within Catholicism. Okay. Um, so so Bessarion, uh, Benedictus Intellectus, which is our common friend. He said the caps will refer that they didn't have good texts of Palamas. He'll usually out on things like that, or will say Palamas wasn't clear enough in his terms. And what would, would okay? So my, my initial thought, uh, Bessarion, is that we may yeah, actually is... consider because this is exactly what uh, the Jansenists did when they tried to defend their error and said that Jansenius uh, actually was an heretic. So we could could we consider um, the condemnations such as from um, who who was it, uh, Benedict the Fourteenth? Um, could could we say, and then also Benedict the, the 12th, at least the SDS says in a different document, um, could could we say that that would be a, a certain dogmatic fact um, that is being brought forward? Well, so for, first of all, it's completely false that um, the those altars that I quoted didn't have uh, access to Palamas's work. Batavius quotes Palamas a lot. Batavius was able to read Greek. Uh, Frenzelin, who's, who also says... A lot of things against Palamas. He was able to read Greek. 
uh, they cite the original works of Palamas directly. They mention where they find the works of Palamas. Uh, Natalis Alexander also quotes Palamas directly. Uh, the, the works of Palamas, they, they were present among, among, among these classics uh, in, in Greek. They were able to read Greek. Um, so like there, there's no doubt that they, they were able to access uh, Palamas' or original writings and uh, analyze it. Um, right, so yeah, what, what, what was the other question again? Sorry. Oh, it, it's usually or that he wasn't uh, he wasn't clear enough in his terms. Yeah, Palamas was was obscure in his in his theology, certainly, and he didn't think as clearly as in Scholastic would think, because, of course, the Scholastics had a very precisely defined um, set of words and expressions to use and and and. Um, explain what kind of distinction exists among um, any two objects, right? Palamas did, didn't have um, a very precise um, set, set of words to use, right? But um, in, in any case, the, the scholastic terms are very clearly defined, right? We have a real distinction being very clearly defined, uh, which is, of course, um, oh, by the way, um, when Cap says that two, the, the, the expression real distinction was defined equivocally among Dominicans and Franciscans, it is, uh, it, it is a, of course a fallacy because uh, the, since if the Dominicans and Franciscans, they do not have the same understanding of how they do not have the same understanding of how uh, two really distinct objects interact, like according to him, Franciscans believe that they do not require separability. Uh, it doesn't mean that they are equivocal, right? Because otherwise, like if we have different concepts, uh, different consequences of a definition, it doesn't mean that the, the term is equivocal. Like for example, uh, Dominicans and Franciscans, they certainly believe in the same God. Uh, but it's not because the Franciscans believe that uh, the attributes of God are formally distinct and the Dominicans believe they are virtually distinct, that they believe in different gods, right? It's, it doesn't mean that the word God is equivocal, right? Um, mm -hmm. So uh, Pal so Caps commits a fallacy when he says that it should mean that these two, that um, the word, the, the expression real distinction is equivocal for Dominicans and and Franciscans. So, so Basarian, and, uh, would would you say there's besides the the discussion I brought up when it came to the uh, necessary, uh, essential, primary object of the beatific vision? Would you say there's even any uh, debate when it comes to the object of the beatific vision? He was making it sound like you had some uh, it, the an extreme uh, Franciscan party, a Scotistic party, a moderate Franciscan party, a, and then you had not, the evil Thomas. Who were <laughs> lobbing lobbing arrows of heresy and wanted to burn him at the stake? Um, so, so is is that even fair? Because I haven't seen anybody discuss anything except what I just brought up when it came no, to not uh, at all. I I read a lot of Franciscans. I I, I am very interested in in reading um, Scotus. I I I love the Scotus theology. I, I'm not a Scotist, but I, I love reading Scotus. I, I read a lot of Scotists, a lot of old dogmatic. Um, Treatises written by Scotus, scholastic treatises written by Scotus. And I have never seen such a distinction that Caps makes among an extreme Franciscan party, party and a moderate Franciscan party. It makes no sense at all. Um, they, are, they are all unanimous in condemning Palamism. Every Franciscan that talks about Palamas is to condemn him, uh, never to say, oh, wait, maybe this guy is, is right in some points. Maybe he can. We can reconcile our uh, our view with his. Um, yeah. So there is no such a distinction that Caps makes. So when it comes to the specific note that's given, the the theological note that's given concerning the object being the essence. So uh, however you wanna, I will. You wanna, is, I will. Would, would, is that day? Would you say I it's have day to go? Day? Uh, oh, you have to yeah, go. But, one one yeah, last question. Is. Would you see it's day fide defina uh, et yeah. or? How would you give the yes, notes to that? Yes, certainly, yes. 
it's definitive in it, Catholica. Yes, no, there's there's no doubt about it. Um, any trade has written about um, the development of of dogmas. A any author who talked about the development of dogmas, like uh, Maureen Sola or Salavahi or, or Cartagini, any of those authors would, would certainly say that the definition um, in this topic is, is dogmatic and defeated. It can't be denied without heresy. So, yeah. Okay, thank you, Basarian. All right, thank you so much. I will talk to you later. Okay, it's Go just off, end day. Bro, he went off. He I went off, that. bro. That was a go-off moment. Yeah, and I that was I by the way, just letting you know, that was a 30 minute long go off moment. Really? Wow. So yes. I um and everybody listening, um, I'm going to in in the description below, you're gonna have Basarian's thread on this on Palamas being called a heretic uh by Catholic theologians. So make sure you go there, uh read that if you want all of the sources. Make sure you give Basarian a follow. Uh, I know he doesn't post as much as he used to, but he has some really good threads uh, that you all check, uh, check out. But we are going to, after that uh, brief intercession, we are going to continue on. Do you have anything to say, Dende? No, I'm I'm actually um, I'm actually impressed because he brought more things than he was planning.